Do you have any automotive questions you want to ask but wish you could do so with a real expert on the topic? Well, you may like this video then. Welcome to a new segment I'm calling Ask an Expert. In it, I'll bring on someone in the automotive industry who knows their stuff and I'll ask them a question. Today's question, is the Tesla Cybertruck a good off-road vehicle? Today's expert to help me answer that question is Sean Holman. Sean is a longtime automotive enthusiast and veteran truck and off-road journalist who worked for the Motor Trend Group for nearly 20 years, eventually overseeing content for the company's truck and off-road group as content director. After departing from Motor Trend in January of 2023, Sean started a marketing and consulting company called Use for Adventure, which helps companies create content, experiences, marketing plans, and assists in product development. Sean is also the co-creator and co-host of the number one truck enthusiast podcast, The Truck Show Podcast with Lightning and Holman. In addition, Sean is the editor at large and partner in the new upstart enthusiast publication and platform, OVR Magazine. He's also a friend and I'm happy to have him on here as the first in this new series. So let's move on to answering that question. Uh, Sean, thanks for joining me. Uh, always a pleasure to see you and talk to you. How's yeah. it going? Uh, pretty good. It's just been a uh, crazy end of the year, and uh, I think uh, w last time I saw you, we were uh, having beers. I think at uh, <laughs> at the uh, Four Sons Brewery down in uh, in HB. So yes, I think I think I think that sounds about right. Um, and uh, also on a Jeep uh, Grand Wagoneer launch, or, or um, not the Grand Wagoneer, the Four by E. Four by E. Oh, that's right. Out in uh, out in Utah, with Sand yeah. Hollow area. Yep, um, that was a good one. Um, so. I wanted to have you on here because you are probably, of all the people I know in this industry, you know the most about wheeling and off-roading. Um, you're passionate about it. You're passionate about pe teaching people about it, how to do it correctly and safely and all that good stuff and preserving um, the, the just everything off-roading means. And, and um, you know, um, that's all important stuff and I appreciate that. So I can think of no better person to ask uh, questions about the Cybertruck and, yeah. and what will be good for off-roading and maybe what's not so good um what are your initial thoughts just in general about the cyber truck uh yeah. as it pertains to off-road so uh, in full disclosure i was brought in early like years ago to see the initial uh, prototype or concept hmm. and that was a few weeks before the famous uh public <laughs> intro with the uh, the broken window and all that kind of stuff yeah and they had brought me in along with some colleagues from Motor Trend at the time and basically said, hey, listen, we're not necessarily truck people. We're going to jump into this space and we'd like to get some really honest, you know, feedback. And so I, I was really honest with it. You know, I'll, I'll be honest with you. The first time I saw it, I thought it was a joke. Right. Uh, they showed it to us and we were like, that's funny. Rad steampunk thing you did over there. Where's the real one? Right. Like it was it was jarring, to be yeah. honest. With you. Um, and I wasn't a huge fan, but I'll say that was years ago. The design has grown on me. Some of the things they did for production are good. Some of the things they did for production are not great. One of the things that they did that was good is they scaled it down about 20%. Hmm. So the original concept was about as wide as a Raptor. Well, the issue with it being as wide as Raptors, a Raptor's that wide at the, at the track width, right? They wanted to have a truck that was very stable for going fast off-road. And the problem is the body, because they didn't have, you know, bulge fenders and things like that, like the Raptor was just as wide. So like one of my concerns was, how do you get out of it in a parking space? And they're like, what do you mean, right? Because you, in an F-150, you slides in the parking space, the Raptor may be at the limit, but the doors are the same width as a regular F-150. So Cybertruck, the whole body was as wide as the track, basically. So without having a, a Falcon or a, uh, you know, a, a Lambo style, you know, scissor door, there wouldn't have been ways to get in and out of it. I mean, it was also pretty big. You know, you look at the trail and things like that. So my initial impressions of kind of seeing where they went with it is, is good. I think they listened to a lot of feedback. I think there are things inherent to the design that they're going to do no matter what. Yeah. And that's fine. That's they're They're taking their own path. I think it's great that there's a company out there that says, we don't care what the traditionalists think. We're going to just go do something crazy. And I, I never think that's a bad idea. Now, whether it's a sales success or embrace is a different conversation altogether. But the fact that somebody's willing to put in that level of capital to completely disrupt the space. And if you like it, if you don't, it's polarizing, right? And 
I think initial impressions, it's, it's you know, um, I've also had a lot of time with the Rivian. And so even with the production Rivians that we took cross country the Trans America Trail last year, we had an engineer sitting in the backseat with laptops. We were fine tuning the calibration on, you know, throttle input and what each mode did and, and strategies for the electronics with guys making notes in laptops and making code change and the next day the car would be updated. So when I look at the initial reaction, oh, it can't climb a hill, but the lightning did, or it got stuck in snow and a super duty had to pull it out. Part of that is the design is not mature. The, the function's not mature yet. It's not even production yet. And those things are both release candidates. Um, and even after they come out, there's gonna be a lot of data that gets back and there's gonna be things that are modified. And the beauty of like a software defined vehicle, like a you know, EV, like the Cybertruck is they can make those updates over the air. You could have a more capable vehicle tomorrow or a better capable year from now than you did at launch. So those things don't necessarily bother me yeah. um, because I, I, it's, it's all malleable at this point. And the other thing is it's, it's driver. It's, you know, some of those, you know, photos like way too much tire pressure or, yeah. you know, didn't look like it was necessarily a traction control issue in all of them. So there's a lot of things where it's really neat to do the TikTok video or the Instagram reel and t talk about how crappy it is or whatever. But the reality is, is developing a car is really hard. Yeah. Yeah. Now there's a good point too about the driver. Um, you know, uh, this could be their first truck. Uh, they might be new to the truck segment and new to then driving the truck in snow, which is totally different than just doing dirt. Um, so now onto the onto the actual specs of it. There are some good numbers out there. Yeah, yeah, it's heavy, but you know a lot of trucks are heavy. Um, a, a Raptor, like you said, is heavy. A Rivian, TRX, yeah, know. oh yeah, TRX is a beast. Um, uh, and but you know, 17 inches of ground clearance is pretty sweet. Uh, a 35 uh, degree approach angle is not bad. 28 for uh, departure is not bad. Um, you know, it's not game changing, but again, it's it's pretty decent. And then it, it says it has 12 inches of travel, which sounds yeah. pretty interesting too. I don't so understand. I think yeah, I think they're so I, I haven't I haven't measured it. My understanding from people who have been around the truck is the the shock stroke is really short. Okay, that's what I think. And, so, and so they're 12 inches of travel. I think they're talking about 12 inches of range of adjustability yeah. and height because it's air suspension. So right. when they say travel, we're thinking, oh man, that's like TRX Raptor numbers. Right. I don't know that that's true. Although it's possible because of how wide it is, you know, as, as you and, and most of your viewers know is on a TRX or on a um, Raptor, uh, the way they get travel on an IFS vehicle or trophy truck is the shocks are inboard, the wheels way out here, and then you basically have the lever changes, right? It's further away. So they could have 12 inches of travel. I think it's the adjustability of the air suspension because I couldn't find any more specs on it. So I'm not 100% sure about that. The other thing is it's air and I hate air for off-road right, yeah. um, because A, if you blow a compressor, if you don't have a closed loop system, you lose your ground clearance and that's going to be a, a, a liability. The other thing is very hard to tune air, although my understanding is they have a, a Bilstein shock similar to the TRX where it has adjustability on the compression and rebound side, which is huge. Yeah. But with air, not only are you pumping it up to level ride height, but you're also having the more air in there is the higher your spring rate is. So you have a variable spring rate. And as it compresses, the spring rate is constantly changing. And as you're introducing more air into the system, your spring rate is changing. So you have to have it paired with a good adjustable shock so you don't have a ride penalty from that. So there are good things about air, but in the world of off-roading, like, cool, I can push a button and it'll climb, you know, I get more ground clearance approaching, I can climb on this. I'm on a side slope. I can lower it down to kneel mode and really hug the rocks so my center of gravity is lower. Like those things are cool, but a good driver doesn't really need all that technology. Mm -hmm. But again, a lot of these trucks, whether it's the Hummer, whether it's the Rivian, whether it's the um, Tesla Cybertruck, they're mostly catering to a new generation of off-road driver who isn't as versed. And so they want to be able to push a button and have the vehicle do things. I'm the opposite. I want, I want to control the modes of the vehicle. And I think Rivian's done a good job um, with their platform and having you know the driver still have some say over what the vehicle's doing i hope tesla's the same the um haven't driven it yet although i have driven a tesla model y that was lifted mm. uh with unplugged performances uh dirt and snow coilover uh suspension and two inch lift we took on a bunch of you know goat trails out around barstow california 
actually really impressed with it. Um, and they do have an off-road mode. And I purposely was getting wheels in the air, uh, going over berms and stuff, because I wanted to see what would happen. Obviously, most IFS vehicles are gonna hang a wheel. And so I wanted to see if the trash control was good enough to propel it with wheels in the air. And it was, and I was actually pretty impressed. So my thought was, yeah, this isn't the Cybertruck, but if they're using similar logic and they're learning from what's already out there, because like, yeah, nobody's offering their Model Y necessarily, but there are snow driveways and muddy roads and you know there are rural customers that have those vehicles. And so the, the traction control needs to be able to get those people down a road and home. So like I said, I don't think all is lost because a couple of videos were a little bit embarrassing about quote unquote capability. Um, but the things that I have wheeled um, off road with, you know, on the Tesla platform, it's actually not, a, not, hmm. not super worried about the traction control. So and that's interesting about unplugged performance. Now I'm curious if they're going to offer some stuff for the Cybertruck. Um, what, what are the things that immediately jump out to you as, um, besides the negative videos, yeah. besides the questionable suspension travel, um, yeah, yeah. what are the things that you go like, oh, that specifically is potentially going to be really good for someone going off road. So Unplugged Performance has a whole Cybertruck line coming out called Invincible. And so I've seen some of the parts, I've seen some of the CAD, it's really interesting. Um, they are mounting to hard points on the skateboard chassis. So that tells me that the underlying structure is strong enough for recovery and things like that um, without seeing it pulled apart. But it looks like it has some structure underneath that is, that's gonna be really good. I know they're offering a 20 inch, their new uh, BFG uh, Terrain HD with um, their wheel and tire package. They have a beadlock coming and then a 20 inch wow. Cyber X wheel. That's pretty cool, uh, but a true beadlock. Uh, so I, I can't, I just can't remember what Tesla is coming out of the factory with uh, on theirs. But um, one of the things I'll say is on the Rivian, the weight of the wheels and tires, um, or the, the, I should say the way the vehicle with the wheels and tires and then the amount of torque, they have Pirelli Scorpions on there. And yeah. the thing about EVs that's really weird is it's like, oh, we need low rolling resistance tires on an off-road vehicle, right? Like two, those two worlds don't really right. exist. So you go through tires on a Rivian like 7,000 miles or, or, or less, it tears them up. So it'll be interesting to see with all the torque also on, on the Cybertruck and how heavy it is. And they're saying the extended range um, battery pack might weigh like 1,600 pounds or something like oh, that. Wow. Okay. Or maybe it was, I'm sorry, maybe it was 500, maybe it was 500 pounds and it was 1600 bucks or I don't I can't remember. Okay. Yeah. I'll, I'll, don't quote me on that. There's a, there's a extended range battery pack that will plug into the bed from the accessory side. Yeah. Yeah. Um, some of the other things that I think a really short overhang w on the front, which is really good. Yeah. Um, I think that, I think that's cool. The fact that these control arms are really close to the center of the vehicle means that you are maximizing the travel. I think the suspension sounds like it's pretty good for what it is. My only concern is how much stroke you have. I would have uh, wanted to see them move the shocks outboard so you can get a little bit more stroke than what I think it has. And then some of the negatives are sight lines are gonna be horrible off-road. I know they're kind of mitigating that with cameras and things like that, but um, the where you sit on it, where you're at on it. And then you also wonder, you know, the stainless steel, which originally that thing was supposed to be titanium and they, they moved it over to stainless. Um, I, I wonder what the, you know, the durability is gonna be in daily use, washing it down, fingerprints, scratches. Is it gonna be one of those things where the more patina, the better, and people just really embrace it? Because yeah, there's been a DeLorean, right? We all know that, but those never went off road. Those never got right. mud and, and grit and sand and abrasive stuff on it. What are those cars gonna look like? And then who's the first guy that's gonna blow one apart and then electric, you know, coat it so it's got a mirror polish and then, you know, you blind anyone who looks at you. <laughs> but I think lines are huge. I think the bed use case is, is you know, TBD. I think yeah. they did some cool stuff with the L tracks and things like that and the rolling tonneau. But the reality is, is you can't lift, you can't reach over the bed like you would on a traditional pickup truck with the way that kind of flying buttress comes down. You know, it's like mm -hmm. higher at the front of the bed and the oh, lower. Yeah. So from a functional standpoint, I don't know that that's that's going to be great. One of the things that Unplugged is doing is a full uh, skid plate and then rock rails with removable side steps, and then also their rear bumper system integrates a class three or class four receiver and covers the whole butt behind the, the um, rear wheel all the way under the Cybertruck so that you can actually land the vehicle on it. And they've got little corner guards that can do, I think, one and a half times gross vehicle weight on it. So wow. the fact that they're gonna offer a product that they're confident is going to protect the underside of that thing means that there has to be some pretty good structure involved, you know, involved there. And I think Tesla even said that 
the structure of the Cybertruck is is really robust. So I think those things are good. I also wonder about you know some of the things that you want to do for off-road. So obviously it's going to have to have a 12 volt b- battery architecture for things like your Baja Design Lights or your Midland yeah. Radio or whatever. I wonder if you know a company like 67 Designs or some of those guys that do all those interior mounts are going to find it, it harder or or easy in that interior to mount the accessories that people bring because a lot of people have a satellite communicator like a you know a spot or a garmin mm-hmm. in range. and then they've got their gmrs radio um then you you know and then i don't know how the you know the architecture of the ev part of it is going to interfere with you know your radio transmissions and things like that so there's a lot of unknowns i think it's really interesting um but um there's a lot of stuff people tack on their vehicles to go go exploring so i guess the big the big note here with the cyber truck is uh it can be updated quickly as needed there's already potentially really cool parts coming to make it that much better but there's a lot that's just kind of tbd um yeah. I'm curious. I'm curious too about that. Like, once you're running through hard bushes uh, coming down that steel, is that going to just mar it up? Because like, it sh- it shouldn't scratch it based on what they've said. But sure. you never know. Uh, that's crazy that it would have been titanium. That would have been insane. Um, yeah. So we. Uh, I, I don't think. Uh, it, I'll tell you the story off air because I still think there's probably <laughs> some documents that have gotten signed. Okay. I'll tell you the original. So, so people are wondering why is why is the Cybertruck uh, metal, right? Because the most expensive thing in a body shop is the paint, or in a in car production is the paint and body shop, and they wanted to offer it at a forty thousand dollar price point. Obviously, this is four or five years ago, pre inflation, right. um, and so they wanted to get rid of that. And then also, you don't have to sequence color down the line because everything's the same. And so, if you look, the only way to modify the the um, color from the factory is with a wrap. They have white or a black mat. I think is what they're offering. So give her the paint shop. And the idea was they had such a corner on titanium um, because of the Starship project that they were mm-hmm. going to make this thing out of titanium. And titanium is obviously lightweight, and you know it has its its own things that are pretty cool. The color of it, how it ages, how it patinas um, versus stainless steel, which stainless steel is an interesting choice because stainless steel doesn't really crash well. Like it's not like mild steel or even high strength steel. It's it's really like a, a hard and somewhat brittle. So it'll be interesting to see what the crash tests are. The first guy that rolls one or or right. into something. I'm really curious to see how the stainless holds up. But um, they changed it from originally being titanium to stainless. And there's a story behind that. I wish I could tell you, but I'll tell you. I'll tell you in person. But I'll I'll tease okay. that for now. Right. Uh, but the reason was to get rid of the the paint shop. And so stainless isn't really. There's a there's a reason why. And I talked to some engineers who are at other OEs, right? And I asked them, what do you think about, you know, this move to stainless? And they're like, there's a reason we don't build cars out of stainless steel. Right. And I thought that was really interesting. And if you look, yeah, there's the DeLorean and there is, you know, like what, yeah. like what yeah. else is out there? So are they really pushing the limits? Were the, was it a smart choice? Obviously it's, you know, stainless can be heavy depending on, you know, the mix of, of alloy and all that kind of stuff and, and the thickness and, there's just like like you said i hate to say tbd because it's, it's, i think some people go well you guys are the experts it's kind of a cop-out but right. the reality is is that there's a lot of people who made a lot of assumptions up front about the cyber the cyber truck that are totally false mm-hmm. and I, I think that you know even as professionals we really want to put our our hands behind the wheel and our butts in the seat before yeah. we start you know tearing something apart i think that's part of the journalistic Due, due diligence. It's fun to uh, armchair race and you know look at the spec sheet. But until you drive in the world, I mean, you, you look at so many things that look good on specs and they're awful vehicles to drive. And you look at some stuff that's not very good on specs and it's some of the most fun vehicles out there. And you know you've experienced that in your in your career too. Absolutely. So you know I think TBD is is a safe way of saying you know we want to be accurate and really give you a, a, a good educated opinion. You know, rather than just say, "Oh yeah, this thing's gonna suck," or "It's ugly," or this or that. I, I think to the right person, Cybertruck makes a lot of sense. I think mm-hmm. it's a lifestyle vehicle. Look at it that instead of a pickup truck. And if it makes you happy and you want to go out and use it, man, go have fun. It's it's gonna be pretty capable. I think the uh, the they have a basically a, a locker in the rear that locks the the motors together, so it's a virtual rear locker. Oh, that's so, cool. You know, there's 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 gonna be things that make it better off road. Uh, or make it good off-road. I think the foundational hard parts are there. It's all about how the software is implemented 
to uh, to address the you know capability and functionality of it. That was very well said and a perfect way to wrap up this conversation. Uh, Sean, I want to thank you for taking the time to come on and, and chat Cybertruck with me. I really appreciate it. And uh, I think we'll meet together again soon at Four Suns, like you were saying. <laughs> All right, man. I uh, appreciate the time and we'll, uh, we'll catch up with you soon. So there you have it. We both think the Cybertruck has some great qualities with respect to off-road capability, but still a fair bit remains to be proven. Sean had some great points about the adaptability of the Cybertruck platform with respect to the over-air updates as well. And I'm excited to see what unplugged performance can do. What do you think about the truck's off-road potential? And what are some great future questions we can ask about any automobile on the market or coming to market soon? Sound off in the comments.